Hey guys, welcome to my VFX vlog where I will try to answer your visual effects and filmmaking questions. The first question isn't so much a question, it's more an attitude and that's the attitude of fix it in post. Basically, what fix it in post means is that sometimes when you're out on a shoot you're like Ah, I can't be bothered setting up that extra light or I can't be bothered setting up that green screen or I'm just gonna, you know, use a low shutter speed or a high ISO, I'm just gonna fix it in post. Whenever you find yourself or anyone making a decision based on that, you should ask yourself one crucial question. And that question is, if I don't spend five minutes now setting this up properly, how much time will this cost me in post-production? Not setting up a green screen because you think, ah, oh, it's fine, I'll just animate and mask or use the Roto Brush tool, which I will show you later, to fix it in post. But sometimes that can take you four, five, six, seven hours of rotoscoping something. It would have taken you 10 minutes to get the green screen up. Or if you notice you shot something with a really low shutter speed and all the frames are a little bit blurry and you think, ah, oh, that's all right, I'll deal with it. But then again, you have to rotoscope something in post-production and because all the frames are blurry, it's a bloody pain in the ass. Another scenario might be you need to set up a light so that two separate scenes look like they're shot on the same day or something and you just can't be bothered doing it and you think, ah, we'll fix it in post, we'll tweak it a little bit and it'll fit. But you're saving yourself a little bit of time on the shoot, but you're going to spend much more time in post-production fixing it all up. And I guarantee you, whenever you find yourself feeling like, oh, we'll fix it in post, think again, make the right decision. I mean, sometimes it might be quicker in post, but... 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not. 99.9% .9 of the time, you're better off setting it up or reshooting the scene or doing it right there on the spot. Now, fix it in post leads into the next question, which is around how do I organize my workflow? What's a good way to organize your workflow when you're working on videos and visual effects? I'm quickly going to show you one of the things that I like to do, mainly with my folder structure and how I like to organize all my files so I know from start to finish where all the files for my projects will be. So here's one of the folders I have for one of my tutorials for the main channel and what you'll see is that in the base folder all I have is the script file which contains the script for the tutorial as well as my Adobe project and my After Effects file. Then I have a bunch of subfolders. The most important one is probably the footage folder. This contains screen captures, my actual base footage, um, bio, audio and other little bits and pieces that I will use in Adobe Premiere to put together the final tutorial. I also usually have a separate folder for VFX. This is basically footage that's been through After Effects and exported from After Effects to be put back into Adobe Premiere. So this is all the source files that I will use in Adobe Premiere. Another thing I have, I have a sound folder. I use Cubase for some of the mixing and some of the audio effects and so for that I use Cubase and because there's a lot of files that I need to work with, I've got a separate audio track export, a video track export and then that all gets combined into the final product. I do have a separate sound folder. The other one I have is I have a render folder. This is where I have two files. I have the audio file and I have the video file. This is the final audio export from Cubase that will then go back into Premiere and then from Premiere I export the final video file. This is the one that will actually get uploaded to YouTube. Now obviously this might look different in your projects depending on what type of files you work with and what type of projects you work with but a big part of workflow is just figuring out what works for you and staying organized not dumping everything in one folder and you can't find where your source files are and you're missing audio and you remember that you added some muzzle flashes to some clip but you can't find it anymore. Stay organized, it will greatly, greatly improve your workflow. Now, one more thing, and I briefly touched on this when I talked about the whole fix it and post issue, is rotoscoping. Now, rotoscoping simply means to take an element in your scene cut it out so that you can separate it from your base layer and then for example apply effects to it or place something behind that element in your scene and there are different ways to do rotoscoping. You can use masks and animate them which can be very tedious and in After Effects CS5 and above you also have a new tool called the Roto Brush tool and I'm going to quickly jump into After Effects and show you exactly how to use it. Now here's an awesome frame of me looking like an absolute derp. Basically this is a clip from my blood smear tutorial which you can find on my main channel if you're interested. It's basically me just jumping against the wall and then in the tutorial we'll add a nice big fat blood smear dragging down the wall as I slide down. Now in order to rotoscope we'd have to separate me out from this background layer. One way to do this is to draw a mask around me. So again pick your mask tool, make sure you select the layer if you remember VFX log number four 
and then you basically draw a mask around me. I'm just going to do a really, really rough job here because otherwise you're going to get bored. In this clip, I'm moving, which means we have to animate the mask for every single frame. You can do this by going to the mask, animating the mask path property, and then going through frame by frame and you know tweaking all the points of the mask. But that's going to take incredibly long and it's absolutely insane, which is why Adobe have introduced the Roto Brush tool in CS5 or later. I'm just going to quickly delete this mask because we don't want to use it. Basically, the Roto Brush tool can be found at the very top on your menu bar on the right hand side. There's a Roto Brush tool. So click on the Roto Brush tool and then select your layer and double click on it. So this will bring up another layer window where I can paint in. My pen is actually a brush. I can now paint. I can paint green and red by holding down the Alt. One thing you always want to make sure is that you're applying the Roto Brush tool in full resolution. To check this, simply go over to the view, go to resolution and uh, Yep, this is not good. Set the resolution to full, because otherwise when you're rendering the video at full quality, it will use the full resolution for the Roto brush. And if that's not the one you applied the brush in, the results may be very, very different. So basically now what we want to do is with this brush that we have, we want to paint over the areas that we want to cut out. So I'm just going to very, very roughly make a little green outline inside of my body. And one thing you'll see immediately is you will see a purple outline. This outline defines which parts of the layer will be cut out. Uh, you can see I'm doing a bit of a Van Gogh there. My ear isn't quite in it. Let's paint over that as well. And the outline will snap around my ear. Now, if you look between my arms and my body, obviously we don't want to keep these little holes. So what we can do is you can hold down the Alt key, which will turn your cursor red. And then you can basically erase those areas and the Roto Brush tool will cut them out. The Roto Brush tool does actually do a pretty good job of detecting the edges and moving along with them. Let's go back to the center. And so basically what you do is you move through frame by frame again, but it's not as painful as when masking because this tool will actually try to retain the edges as I'm moving around. So I can just step through frame by frame and you can see the purple outline is pretty good at following me. And here it's getting a bit problematic. And as you can see, the frames are really, really blurry. And that is because the movement is very fast, but I did not use a high enough shutter speed. And therefore I've got blurry frames, which are always really hard to rotoscope. What I should have done is reshoot this scene with a higher shutter speed, which would probably have taken me maybe 10 minutes. Instead, I had to spend probably 30 odd minutes rotoscoping myself out throughout these blurry frames. Again, I'm not going through the whole thing, but you get the gist. So basically what you do is you kind of keep using the Roto Brush tool and draw around the areas that you want to have included in your cutout layer as best as you can throughout the whole entire sequence. And yes, this can take a while depending on how long your clip is and depending on how complicated the object is that you need to cut out. But that is just kind of the price you pay for rotoscoping something. But I think you get the gist. I don't want to keep doing this. Otherwise, it's going to take forever. Basically, once you're done, you can jump back to your composition by clicking on the little composition tab at the top of your preview window. And voila, it should be nicely cut out using the Roto Brush tool, which I guarantee you is a lot, a lot quicker than animating a mask manually. And that's all there is for VFX vlog number five. As always, if you have any questions, any problems, any issues, leave them in the section below and I will get around to answering them. If you want to get some more tips and tricks on visual effects and filmmaking, make sure to subscribe. Don't forget to hit that like button, favorite the video, share it around. It really helps me and my channel out a lot and it's greatly appreciated. I hope I see you in the next VFX vlog. Until next time, I will see you later.